This video is brought to you by HP Omen. Hi everybody, I'm Al Zeidenfeld here with ESPN Esports and with Blizzard co-founder and president Mike Morheim stepping down from his position, we've brought Jacob Wolf to talk to us all about it today. You know, two of the most popular esports in the history of the game and most successful esports titles in the game uh, are in the industry. Overwatch and StarCraft were made by Blizzard Entertainment. Mm -hmm. Many of their other titles also have had competitive uh, ecosystems. World of Warcraft has Arena. Mm -hmm. Heroes of the Storm has their uh, championship series. And also Hearthstone is incredibly highly competitive. You know, Blizzard is one of those studios that it, it, feels, it feels weird when they hit a dud. Many of their games are incredibly popular, and many of those happen to be very competitive. You know, the game that inspired so many people to go on and create the multiplayer online battle arena games, such as Dota and League of Legends, one of those games was Warcraft, which is a series that Blizzard developed in the early 2000s uh, after StarCraft, um, or Inverse. Uh, to me, it, it makes a very... It was a very big impact, I think, that Mike has had and he's gone from a very small startup founder to being what he was when he left the company, and I'm very impressed kind of in all the projects he's touched within the industry. Whether that be the Overwatch League, the StarCraft World Championship, it doesn't matter. It, it, many of his, the impact he's had overall in the company is, is phenomenal, and the impact that they have had on esports is monumental. I mean, and from a worldwide perspective as well, but, but focusing in a little bit more on the micro, uh, can we talk about his, uh, how South Korean esports blossomed? under you know his influence so you can look back at starcraft and starcraft is definitely the game that i think most people think of when they think of korean esports history mm -hmm. south korea has a very long tenured history in esports I, I was there a few weeks ago and i i went into some of these studios like ogn and others and i just saw on the wall all of these starcraft champions over the years and it just it's infectious and it's uh inspirational to what this could be in the u.s it's definitely south korea Overall, I would say esports is a much more of a cultural, has a bigger cultural impact mm -hmm. than it does in the U.S. And to me, StarCraft is a big part of that. They were one of the first games that was incredibly infectious and, and well played in PC bongs, where you have all these kids that would go after school, some during school, uh, in the case of some pros. And they would go and they would sit down and they would play for hours. And StarCraft was the first game that did that. And it ushered in other games that have become popular there, such as League of Legends and Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Mm -hmm. That culture was started by StarCraft. And that is Blizzard's responsibility for building a game that is inherently naturally competitive. You know, even now, they came out with StarCraft Remastered last year. It, it, to me, that game is, is the godfather of uh, esports and, you know, the grandfather of them all. And, and that's Blizzard's responsibility and, in part, Mike Morheim as well. And from the old school looking towards the new, what type of a legacy uh, does he leave for the future of esports, particularly in focus with maybe the, something like the Overwatch League? I think he was a really good mentor to some of the people that have come up in the Overwatch League and some of the people who have been at Blizzard for a long time. I think that's the biggest legacy he'll, he'll lead. He was, uh, you know, not every startup founder is meant to be a leader. I think Mike Morheim took that in stride. And I think he did a really good job at being a mentor to younger employees and to making sure that everybody had a voice. And, you know, I've done a lot of reporting on the Overwatch League, and that's what I heard in, in my reporting was the fact that people like Nate Dancer, who's the commissioner of the Overwatch League now, was working in a completely different department and wanted to pitch an idea. And he found Jeff Kaplan, who's the, the uh, game designer and the game director of Overwatch, and found him at a random breakfast in Germany at an event. And they sat down and they talked, and it worked their way up the rank, up to Mike, and even got above Mike with Bobby Kotick, who's the CEO of Activision Blizzard, their parent company, and along the way, Mike was a big cheerleader for projects like that, for projects that start inward and then build outward. And the Overwatch League is a great example of that. Thank you very much, Jacob. And if you're looking for more Overwatch or esports information, go to ESPN.com slash esports.